literally just came out of the store and this mustang is parked next to me huh i guess the mustang is trying to hunt the baby bins huh crazy like that So when taking out the glove box, there's going to be a bunch of clips right here. Mine are missing. All of them, unfortunately. So, And then there's a light. You just pry it down on this. And then you disconnect these two connectors. All right, so the glove box is out. All the parts are there. I'm keeping track of all the parts and everything. This is the line that comes to the heater core. But to get to the heater core, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be removed. Okay, so right now I'm working on this center uh, vent assembly. And you just need a needle nose pliers with some cushioning, with some paper towels or whatever. And just be really, really careful. You're going to put it in between right there and carefully wiggle out this part might as well let's see this might be actually loose already yeah. don't squeeze too hard just carefully work it out like that straight out All right, guys, I'm really sorry. I didn't film too much because I didn't have uh, enough memory on my camera, but uh, here's the update basically. Okay, so I took everything out, the clusters, uh, the center console pieces out, glove box, everything is pretty much out and I'm getting ready to pull this dashboard out. Uh, it's almost loose and I'm super excited. You know, I can finally change this heater core and you know be done with it. But the only thing is like, it sucks to replace it on the W201 Mercedes because you also have to pull this whole heater box out and you know just besides the dashboard also have to pull that one out but everything else is amazing it's pretty good it's going great you know uh, i'll just have to order some hardware because some of the hardware for the glove box is missing you know unfortunately somebody's been there and they didn't put it all back together so that sucks i'll just have to order some additional parts but i'm getting ready to replace the heater cord today it's the crazy process you just have to take your time don't rush it's the best to have a helper but i'm by myself so i'm just doing it carefully slowly so nothing gets broken i also have to remove these pillars but they're easy you just carefully you see these clips you just carefully pull on one side on the top and on the bottom towards you just pull towards you carefully and they will come out well the dashboard is right there resting on the grass all good and intact and here's how everything looks here crazy isn't it well that was the big part but now i gotta remove this box out of here so that's gonna be fun all right guys so now i'm working on this box and disconnected the coolant aluminum line and start disconnecting the connectors and then vacuum hoses for the actuators and all that also when before you remove the dashboard i really recommend you lower the steering wheel because you know otherwise you're risking damaging a bunch of stuff and yeah just lower the steering wheel it's gonna be a lot easier and yeah like i said other than that just you know be patient with this job and uh yeah i'm almost ready to pull this box out and replace this crazy heater core well ladies and gentlemen i finally got this thing out just goes up like this and now we can replace this leaky horrible original heater core right there well now it's a perfect opportunity for you guys to replace whatever parts you want to replace it's a good idea to replace this uh steering lock assembly while you're here it's a good idea to replace all the vacuum actuators and i do have a couple of new vacuum actuators but i'm gonna test these ones out and see if they're good or not and then i'll decide what i want to do it's not a huge deal actually uh and other than that as you can see this is the evaporator right here that's where it sits and there's a bunch of other stuff right here aligned so make sure you keep track of everything uh, that you take off and all that just so you know where everything goes to okay and now i'm gonna go ahead and replace this heater core as i have to open up that uh, heater box 
Well, I got some horrible news. This main vacuum flap actuator is uh, bad. I just tested it with my vacuum pump and it's bad. So I'm just really upset with that. I have to do something. I can't just let it be like this. So this project is gonna be put on hold again. That sucks. All right, so I have, there's basically a bunch of clips that go all the way around. So you have to just separate these two halves so you can replace the heater core, okay? And then other than that, uh, this flap is working. I actually checked it already, so that's awesome. And this gives me a perfect opportunity to clean all this junk and make it all nice and clean. Look at how dirty this is. Now I can go ahead and clean it. Yeah, this was quite a bit of a pain and took a lot of patience to do. So make sure you take your time. Now I have to remove these Phillips screws and replace the heater core. Yep, <laughs> craziness, really craziness. Now I have the toothbrush, I'll be cleaning all this garbage. Okay guys, so I'm ready to install a new heater core and uh, this is the cover right here, and this is the heater core, the old one. So I'm gonna pull it out, and we're gonna look at this crazy thing. And it is better, better. so it, it is uh, original. Now I wanna look at it and see if, there, if I can see anything visually that's where it was leaking. This is the new one, okay. And this is the original one. So far I can't really see where it's leaking from, but I'm gonna fill it with water later and maybe we can see the leak a little better. Everything here is cleaned up, drying up, and I'm ready to put everything back together. Okay, so I went ahead and I put this insulation that was supplied with a brand new part, and we're gonna go ahead and install this heater core into the box and assemble the box all together. So one thing to remember is before you install or assemble these two halves together, you actually need to grab these uh, supplied nuts and uh, install them onto here. Okay, it's the easiest way to do it when it's still uninstalled, but now I kind of have to struggle a little bit because I don't want to take it all apart again. Well, I had to take it all apart again to install those nuts. So make sure you don't forget to do that first. We're also going to be putting automatic translator on a bunch of these joints right here so they move easy. This one is holding vacuum. That's awesome. This one is also holding vacuum. Amazing. So the only concern that I have is the one that's in the car. And this is the last third vacuum actuator on this heater box and it's also good. It's a holding vacuum. All right, so I got this sucker out. So it was a pain and you have to be really careful when you're doing it. So there's basically your main door, recirculation door, okay? This guy, so it sits all the way down. So what you need to do is you need to keep pressure on that and you need to push this out first. So then when you disconnect this, then you have to actually untwist it kind of clockwise. So I think I ordered one of these. I'm gonna replace it. This is the only vacuum pod that's bad on this car, which is awesome. So it's a good idea to replace all of them, but as of now, I'm running out of time and I'll replace just this one. This is the one that's bad. And it's responsible for the main recirculation flap right there. 
Well, this is how I'm driving my car at the moment. Bunch of tools everywhere. <laughs> Clusters connected, but yeah, it's pretty crazy because I'm just waiting on a couple of parts before I put it all back together. So it is what it is, guys. But take a look at this cool old school Chevy. It's been here for a long time on this lift. And there's a possibility that I will be reviving it. I don't know yet, but maybe. And there's also a pretty cool El Camino right there hiding in the behind the corner. All right, so I actually had this thing in stock. Okay, this is the same part number and everything. And I'll be installing this bad boy onto the car right there. This is the only vacuum actuator that's bad on this car. All right, it's a brand new actuator holding. No problems, amazing. There's the door. There you go, recirculation door. That's it, made in Germany. Amazing stuff. So the heater box is already installed. I just have to connect the uh, coolant, the heater uh, lines to the new heater core. And then I also have these new O-rings. They're gonna install brand new O-rings onto these lines. As you can see, I painted the lines a little bit here and that one right there as well. This is gonna look really nice and it will protect it from corrosion. And also I'm gonna put some silicone paste on these uh, uh, rubber O-rings before installation. All right guys, everything right here is all connected, all prepped up and same thing with the bottom right here. The line to the heater core is connected. Everything, all the hardware, plastic clip is back. Everything is amazing. I'm ready to install the dashboard back in. Also, really good advice is for you to actually connect if your heater core is bypass connected right now and run the end to make sure there's no leaks. But, you know, I like taking risks and I'm gonna just put the dashboard back together and then, you know, we'll see how everything goes. But it should be no more leaks, guys. Everything is tightened up proper. The O-rings are back where they're supposed to and they're not pinched. So everything should be amazing. All right, guys, I got the dashboard all in. I'm putting stuff back together slowly. Some of the interior pieces are gonna be missing because, uh, you know, this part, I'm looking for another part that's like this. And, uh, you, know, you know, as you all know, they, they all crack, so. You know, I don't want to put the old one back in, so some of the interior stuff is going to be out while I'm driving the car, just so you know. This part, I got it brand new, so I'm going to install that. And the cluster, I'm going to actually rebuild it. I'm going to take it apart and uh, clean it and rebuild it too. And uh, yeah, some of the other stuff as well. But I'm so happy we did a bunch of work to this car already. This car is amazing, coming back to life. All right, so I actually found some brand new bulbs, the little ones, and I'm gonna be testing this one out and then I can put the center cover back on, or piece. And then other than that, like almost ready to go. I'm just gonna be uh, finishing up probably tomorrow with all this. Look at that. This light bulb is working. So I can install this center piece back on now. All right, so now I'm working under the hood here. I have everything out. I'm ready to get rid of this bypass for the heater core, and I'm gonna connect everything the way it should be. This is the old heater valve right here. And uh, I have uh, the new one actually. I'm just replacing it with a brand new original right here. And uh, yeah, I'm just replacing it because, you know, I don't have to worry about it ever breaking again. So, and I love new parts. Okay, so I replaced this heater valve right there. It's all installed, connected. Now I'm gonna replace this hose. It's the original Mercedes brand new hose. It goes from the cylinder head all the way to the other side of the heater core. So there you go, it's gonna be replaced. All right, I prepped the hose and we're gonna install it right now. All right guys, and finally I installed this brand new original genuine Mercedes hose. And it's connected to the bottom right there to the other side of the heater core pipe and on this side everything else is also wrapped up and i put a bunch of put a coolant in it too so we're gonna go ahead and start it up make sure there's no leaks it's running right now so far so good no leaks anywhere 
I'm gonna check both sides of the heater core in a second. So I checked both sides of the heater core. The car's been running for like 10 minutes now, no leaks. Everything is amazing, guys, and that's awesome. Everything's still taken apart. I'll be putting everything back together soon. So it's pretty crazy, guys. I'm already driving. I feel so much heat right here and everything, and right there too. So <laughs> I know the heater is working for sure this time. It's amazing. We fixed everything we needed to uh, get fixed, and now I just need to put everything back together all the way. So I also took the centerpiece apart because I have to replace two bulbs inside of it. I just want to replace everything at once, all the bulbs and everything. And that way, when I put everything back together, everything is going to be amazing. And gotta tell you, this was a pain to actually remove and take this apart right here to just to replace these two bulbs. So there you go. I'm also taking this pump apart and it sits literally like behind there. You have to remove the glove box to get to it. But mine was actually like a little noisy. So I'm going to take it apart. There's a bunch of like carbon shavings right here and stuff like that so i'm gonna clean everything and lubricate this pump and reinstall it back so it's not gonna be noisy anymore lubricated and reassembled installing it back goes right over there it's gonna be a tight fit but we'll get it done Go ahead, turn the ignition on. And this is already connected, all nice. And it's working. You can't hear it, but it's working nice and quiet now. Amazing. All right, everything is reconnected. Install this pipe back. Amazing. Also tightened up this, so it's nice and tight. Just add a little bit of tape to one side and it's amazing now. Now it's not falling. Nice. All right, also installing this brand new brake pedal switch, or I'm sorry, brake light switch. So that's gonna be brand new installed. We're also gonna be replacing this headlight switch knob. So simply pull it and we're gonna install a brand new one, genuine Mercedes. Simply goes on. Like so. All right, so I got the glove box clips because mine were missing. So I'm gonna install them right now to go all the way around. All right, so we have all seven clips installed. Amazing. <laughs> 